Are you a SharePoint framework developer that builds your components using React? Have you ever tried to use the React DevTools profiler in the Google Chrome uh, browser? You ever run into a problem? I bet you did. Didn't work, did it? In this episode, I'm gonna explain why and how you can fix it. Welcome back to the Boitano's podcast. I'm Andrew Connell. This episode is also available as a blog post on Voitanos.io and as a video on the Voitanos YouTube channel at Voitanos.tv. Check the show notes for links to these other options. A few years ago, React introduced the React Profiler to React version 16.5, um, and it's part of or in the React Tool DevTools plugin that's available for Chromium browsers. That's both Google Chrome and uh, Microsoft's Credge browser, as well as Firefox. Now. Developers can use the Profiler API to collect timing information about each component that's rendered in order to identify performance bottlenecks in your React applications. Um, I'm going to include a uh, link uh, in the uh, in the notes on how you can um, uh, learn more about the React DevTools Profiler, um, as well as a deep dive video from the React team. Now. For those of us that are creating React apps with SharePoint Framework Solutions, this is a great resource for building your uh, for building uh, highly performing apps for your customers. Pretty cool, right? But if you're a SharePoint Framework developer, it doesn't work. Why? Because when you try to use it, you get this error that tells you that profiling is not supported. Profiling support requires either a development or a production profiling build of React 16.5. What's going on? So this error indicates that we need React 16.5 or higher. SharePoint Framework projects haven't used an older version of React since 1.7.1, right? Now, we're, if we're using a relatively modern version of the SharePoint Framework, like version 1.8 or higher, it should work, but it isn't. Why? Well, actually, let me just do a quick sidebar here. Unfortunately, what this does mean is that the profiler is only available in SharePoint Framework projects built for SharePoint Online because the latest version of the SharePoint Framework that's supported on-prem uses 1.4.1. So if you're one of those people, I'm sorry, but it doesn't. it's not going to work for you if you're working with SharePoint on-prem. This is only for SharePoint Online. So let me explain what's going on with the issue with SharePoint Framework projects. As the error indicates, for the profiler to work, it needs either a development or a production profiling build. Now, the reason you're getting this is because the profiler needs React to be present in your bundle of your project. And by default, all SharePoint Framework projects exclude React from your generated bundle because they assume, for performance reasons, it's already on the page as an external resource. Now, furthermore, the profiler, the, for the profiler, is going to need a special profiling build or development build uh, to be able to work. So, what do we do? Well, let me take a second. Let me explain how SPFX bundles are generated, and then you're going to understand how we can fix it. So remember, SharePoint Framework uses Webpack to generate bundles used to load our SharePoint Framework components, and the build toolchain dynamically creates the Webpack config when you run Gulp Bundle. The generated Webpack configuration instructs Webpack to always include or exclude the NPM packages, React and React DOM, from your generated bundle. Why? Well, again, the SharePoint framework assumes that React's already on the page. It's a safe assumption because SharePoint Online already uses React in their components. But regardless, every SharePoint framework project that uses React is going to automatically exclude these two NPM packages. So we'd have to go through the process of excluding it ourselves and every project's um, externals element that we have in the config.json file. Now, this means we've got two things we got to do to enable the React dev tools profiler in the browser for our components. First thing we have to do is we have to make sure that React is in the bundle, right? We got to make sure that React is in our JavaScript bundle in order for this to work. But I really only want this to happen when I'm testing stuff. I don't want this to happen inside of production. So I'm going to show you how to conditionally add it when you're doing your development. Now, I also want to make sure that the version of React that's included in the bundle is a profiler friendly version of um, the React uh, package, because that's the other thing that we need. So ideally, again, like I said, I only want this to happen in development, not production, because it's got a significant in impact on the size of the bundles that we ship. You know, for example, in my little test projects, without these changes, right, your a standard out-of-the-box project 
is about 62K, really about 19K when it's minified in a production build. But once I make this change, it's going to balloon my bundle to over a meg. Um, so clearly, this isn't something you want to do in, in production. You only want to do this in development. But thankfully, I can very easily solve both of these issues with just a couple extra lines in my project's gulp file.js uh, file. So the first fix is to include React in the generated bundle. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put the two NPM packages right back into the bundle. And to do this, I gotta tell React to not exclude them from the bundle. So the way I'm gonna do it is in the gulp file.js, I'm gonna add a couple, a little bit of extra code here. And what this code is gonna do is it's gonna take the configuration that's generated by the SharePoint framework build tool chain, the configuration for Webpack, and it's gonna to check to see, am I currently in a development build? And this is true when I run gulp serve or gulp bundle without any arguments. And then we look at the collection of externals that are defined in the config and removes references to React in the React DOM. Now, when React or when Webpack runs and comes across a reference to either of these packages, it's gonna include them in the generated bundle, not exclude them by making those changes. So what changes do I make? What I do in the, in the gulp build file, I, at the very end of it, I call build.configurewebpack.mergeconfig. And what that does is it passes in, I pass in an object, and that object that I'm passing in, I'm going to override a method called the additional configuration. That method gets passed in a configuration object, and I'm just going to call that like my WP config, my webpack config. I can make changes to that configuration and then return it back to the caller which is Webpack. So it's like, hey, here's the config that we created. Would you like to do anything to it before we actually go use it? And so what I'm doing is I'm checking to see is the current mode of Webpack development. And if it is, I'm going to walk through his configuration externals list. And I'm going to look at everything that's in there. And I'm going to find anything that does not equal React or does not equal the React DOM. And I'm going to return it back but I also want to include React and the React DOM. So I'm going to, I'm going to exclude React and uh, React DOM from the list of externals. And that, when Webpack comes across it, Webpack's going to say, oh, that's we want to make sure that we include that in the bundle, where normally it's going to exclude it. So when you look at it, it's going to, it's going to automatically include those in the bundle. Now, that's the first fix. That gets React into our bundle. The second thing that I have to do is I've got to swap out the version of React that's going in the bundle with a profiler uh, version. So the second fix is to configure Webpack to use the profiler friendly package of React when it imports into the bundle. And this is done using the Webpack, Webpack's resolve configuration. This lets us configure how modules are gonna be resolved. So to implement this, I'm gonna add a little bit more code to my project's gulp file.js file um, specifically, I'm going to modify one of the one the, the the code that I just added a second ago, um, right before the if statement that says, "Are we in a um, or right inside the if statement that says, "Are we in a development build or not?" And if I am in a development build, then what I want to check what I want to do is I'm going to set the Webpack configuration resolve property. I'm going to change. I'm going to he has a property called alias. And I'm going to say anywhere you find React DOM, specifically just React DOM. So don't go, uh, don't, if there's anything else after that, don't include it. So I'm using a regular expression. So React dash DOM with a dollar, dollar sign. I'm going to tell it, use the package React dash DOM slash profiling. So instead of using React DOM, we're going to use React DOM slash profiling. Now, when I run Gulp serve to load my SPFX component in the SharePoint workbench, um, you can now see the profiler in the dev tools, uh, and you can see that uh, on a screenshot that I have here. If you're listening to this and you're not watching it, you can go check out the associated blog post or the YouTube video um, to see this. So you can see the error's now gone away. I've got the profiler installed. And so now that I've loaded my web part on the page, I can see the um, profiler showing up at the uh, bottom of the page for my React projects. So I showed you, explained kind of what the problem was, and showed you two simple fixes of how you could resolve this issue to get the React DevTools profiler working in the browser for your SharePoint framework uh, projects that use React. Thanks for tuning into this episode, and I hope you learned something. You got a question or a comment? Let me know what you think. 
by dropping a comment or tweeting me at Andrew Connell or at Voitanos. And if you like this episode, I really appreciate it if you would share this episode with your friends. This episode is also available as a blog post on Voitanos.io and as a video on the Voitanos YouTube channel at Voitanos.tv. I've included links in the show notes to these other resources. And don't forget to subscribe in your favorite podcast app to be notified of future episodes.